welcome to the 2020 uh, Body Corp maintenance report for the village Cabral. I'm here together with Graham, our uh, maintenance manager for the uh, Body Corporate Common Grounds. And we will be looking at an extended version of the building survey that has been done in 2018 uh, by Building Surveying Services Limited. <coughs> so this report, um, and it, right on the front, this report does not take into account whose responsibility is what. So this is a pure building report. Uh, it does not say what is owner's responsibility to fix and what is Body Corp's responsibility to fix. If you wish to know more about that, that can be found in the 2020 AGM minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, contact our Body Corp administration company and uh, they can tell you all about it. I just briefly uh, put in here that everything that's on your own unit title is your responsibility, just as a basic rule of thumb, and everything that's on the Body Corp title, uh, look on the title plan, which is which, um, that is Body Corp's responsibility to fix and maintain. This maintenance plan does not take responsibilities into account, it will tell you everything what has to be done on the buildings and what will be coming up no matter if it's the body corp who pays for it or if it's an owner this is not in this report this report is for everything cool so uh let's get One started I'd like to add yes uh it does not include the interior of any units yes that is that is correct i'm sorry i forgot about that so it's also not interior, it is, also, it is only exterior, and it was only an exterior uh, survey done. So um, I think the easiest way is to just start with the beginning, start with A block. I think A block is pretty good for um, representing uh, B and C as well. So we have the multiple different roofs, um, and um, so we just go and flick through it and uh, Graham, if you could make some some comments on the matter. So we have you have marked here this building report should be available to all owners uh, on our um, my community uh, page login. Um, so you can look it up there. It was also sent out during uh, prior to the 2020 AGM. So we look at this here you say you marked uh, sent and then repaint all timber on the roofing projections is that correct right so what what does that mean so that comes up is is that I'm not too sure not being being a, a tradesman at all uh, what what that actually means for for me or for the body core um. Now, some of our some of our units uh, have timber. Some of them do not have timber. They have a kind of uh, asbestos cement type fittings, so they don't rot. Uh, ah, so on, on on the roof, under the tiles, so on the side, on the on the on the on the roof. Yes, it's on on the pitched part of the roof. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Okay, I think I know what you mean. And so the timber needs to be sanded and uh, repainted. And some of it needs to be replaced. Ah, yes, I think you uh, you told me about this. Um, my uh, unit A13, I have a really odd kind of roof leak there. Uh, it's hardly it hardly ever drips but when it drips it drifts quite quite hard and uh, i think you mentioned that it might be related to one of the yeah one the pitch roof part there is uh the the timber is rotten on one side so that is what this is about 
Right. And that, unfortunately, is it's quite complex in that to remove that timber, we have to remove the tiles that also come over the edge of the roof and over that piece of timber. Right. So that's something that is, of course, um, owner's responsibility. Um, so I better have a look at this and uh, see, because if, if this is really, really rotten, then obviously this will be way more expensive than just sending and repainting it. So it's that yeah. why you, yeah, okay. So this is why, why you mark that as important here. Um, so moving on, we have the send and repaint soffits. What are soffits? Um, that's the piece around the edges of the roof. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, where the guttering is. Yeah, where the, where the guttering goes. And isn't that also and some of the units have it as timber and others have it as, um, that's as, as cement, cement stuff? stuff. Yeah. And it's underneath the actual roof as well. The actual suffit is the part that sticks out mm -hmm. from the wall and is covered by the roof. Um, and then it's got this, it sticks out about uh, or 18 inches or so. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'll, well. So that is, it doesn't need replacing. Um, it just needs painting. Yeah, I think I painted that at least on my A block units a little while back, but I've got to check on this. And of course, uh, the same goes for other owners as well. Replace any deteriorated guttering or down pipes as necessary. I think you're pretty much onto that. Yes. Um, sand and paint timber. Facings, yeah. um, since I have been there, we have not ever done that. Mm -hmm. So it is probably due for that. I'm not too sure where that is. Is that on the on the title on my title, or is that on on the body corp title? I would think it's on the body corp title myself. Right, the piece of exterior, you know, as as like it's part of the underneath of the roof uh, on the exterior. So you would paint okay. that as you would paint the walls of the exterior walls. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that is coming. Then we have exterior cladding. Um, Wash on the cladding and repaint. Must be completed with a garden hose broom. Okay. Yeah, it dissolves the uh, asbestos fiber. All right, that's, yeah, that's an important point. So that, of course, makes it way more expensive looking at it for the 43,000 here um, to, to work it out that way. So with the floodlights, uh, sorry, did I interrupt you for no, the... No, no, no. Okay. With the floodlights, um, we have, because I was an orphan that I had the electrician over, we had the floodlights, some of the floodlights um, replaced. I think Perfect. three needs replacing what we want to do there, if I remember right, is we want to change it that one can actually fold them down so we don't have to uh or so fold down the actual pole to not having to get a cherry picker every time which is quite expensive um and we also have chosen i think already about one or two years ago to uh take off the floodlights in the back since we have cameras there, CCTV cameras there now, which are providing more security than just having some lights there. 
and the cameras are of course night vision cameras so uh, they do a way better job than those lights and sometimes those lights can interfere with the cameras oh yes i remember that yes so uh in the back the lights have been replaced with cameras and uh so that should actually save us some money there and then in the front we need to cut the poles to make them foldable so we because the the actual replacement of the lights is not that e expensive as far as i remember it's more the it's more hiring the cherry picker to get up there yes because of our osh setup yeah um, we're not allowed to use ladders and you can't use it on one pole anyway um, because those poles aren't strong enough. So, replace the washers, Ajax valves uh, to hot water cylinders at leaking out. Okay, so that is um, obviously owner's responsibility to do. Um, I have, I believe I've done that in all my units. Yes, in all my units because uh, the hot water cylinders and all my units are older than me. So um, they they are late 70s hot water cylinders and um, this can actually lead to a bit more having had a chat with the electrician last time. When those, if that's not replaced, there is uh, significant amounts of water flowing out which of course costs the tenant more uh, money for heating, for operating the hot water cylinder. It also damages the wall and the common property in a sense, which is initially not too bad. It's just that more grass is growing there, so we have to spray more, uh, which of course is something that then um, is not too big of a deal. Um, to charge it against the owner um, but it can become according to the electrician uh, a big issue because where this water is flowing out of the hot water cylinder uh, this is also where the main power lines are underground and if those get damaged by uh, outflowing water then uh, this is a couple thousand dollars to fix up and this would be also owner's responsibility because basically you break it you fix it if if anyone breaks something on the common property um, that can be proven then it will be uh, up to that person to pay for that and of course um, for the body corp and but according to the legislation, Unit Title Act 2010 and so on, it will always be uh, the owner's responsibility. So neither property managers, you, as an owner, you can try to sue the property manager if you have one, um, or try to get the tenant to pay for it, which is mostly not particularly successful. So I really highly encourage everybody to uh, fix this up, not just to save money, because this can also break your hot water cylinder, and as I said, they are quite old. Um, but also, in case you know something really big bad happens, uh, you don't want to have this kind of costs and trouble. So please look at your hot water cylinders and work on that. Uh, it's well it's, worth it. It also causes a damp spot, which obviously goes into the concrete. and damages the concrete as well so there are many good reasons for always keeping a good eye on this and um, as far as i can see at the village uh, apart from the local owners um, this hasn't been looked after particularly well so please uh, instruct your property managers or whoever looks after your units to look into this for your own sake. Right, so next one would be wash down exterior, well, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, normal as part of the normal maintenance. So that's of course all in hands. And 
repaint the entire exterior every 10 years. Do you remember when it was? I mean, you're not you're not there since two year, uh, 10 years. But do you, has it uh, been yes, done? I have been there 10 years. Ah, you're 10 years now. Okay. I thought um, it was nine or something, very close to it. Yep. Um, there has, to my knowledge, there has been no painting of the exterior. Okay, so this is still something that comes up, and this is why you have to mark that. Uh, why, why you mark this red. So this has to be done for all the blocks. Moving yes. on. Right. The rear of unit 10. I think that has been done. Yeah. That was, that was all done? Yes. Okay, that has been done. And uh, body corp question mark, obviously, it's not a body corp responsibility to do that. So the owner fixed that up, I believe. Um, perform any repairs with the waste water. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is also not body corp responsibility, uh, but the owners that I believe have fixed that up as far as I remember. Um, but please, owners, check those. Uh, this is, again, water, wastewater. This can damage your own property uh, if that goes on for too long or the property, the common property, and uh, can cause a lot of costs if ignored for too long. Right, so the laundries, which are the uh, ABC um, blocks in, in the middle, right in the corner send and repaint i believe we have done that looks that, quite nice that was uh, done. yeah looks quite nice we also have painted the the floor and uh before and after pictures uh just it's it's completely different now but this was only possible to do or worth doing because we have installed cameras in there uh, those places have been used by uh, a lot of questionable individuals. Um, there was a lot of damage done, um, but then we installed cameras there and uh, things quieted down very quick. So it was well worth painting it. And now uh, it looks very nice, if you ask me. So that has been done. Hot water cylinder, that has been done that that has been done very good so the hot water cylinders have been removed out of there they weren't working anyway and we're not required to have hot water cylinders in the um houses uh, in the laundries of this uh of a b and c block um so then send and repel repaint uh walls and ceiling which is of course an an ongoing thing Um, I don't know, which, should we just bring up that point there that we have also um, put doors on that and we are now operating them as a rental storage area? Yes, yeah, so on a common property, um, but that was already put into place in uh, 2019 and I think we have that on the uh, AGM meetings back then and it was decided to do so. Um, but Good point. Uh, those are, as far as I remember, um, more or less all rented out. And this is a little bit of additional income for the body corp, which is very nice, very good. So pretty and much within, within this time frame, we already have made back the money that it did cost us to install the doors and the locks and uh, in this bit so hopefully within the next two years uh we can see uh a return on investment there for building this building the wash houses abc wash houses up nicely and it also it also stopped people from storing bits and pieces and rubbish in there in there yes however i would say that this is more because of the cameras Yes. Um, 
because if you if you have pretty pictures of yourself dumping something there and then uh, being followed up on it, um, I don't think it would have stopped. At, I think I believe in in C block, uh, it hasn't. There were some incidences that despite despite the doors and everything in there that it was just put on the walkway. Um, so uh, the cameras did the job there more than than those doors did. But the yep. but the storage gave us uh, the storage units uh, give us a little bit extra income on the body corp side, uh, which we can hopefully reinvest into some uh, more making the place look much nicer. So that is pretty much as far as I can see. The oh no, we have is that the roof for a block? Yes. So we have two types of roofs at in in the different blocks. So we have the corrugated iron roof. And, and that, that clip block is the aluminium part. That's that's the aluminium part. Yeah, I was just the thinking, is that the aluminium? Yes. So that's the, the flat roof part. Now there is nothing um marked here however i have my personal experience with that graham as you know um and that's something that we have brought up at the agm as well uh i personally had in my a8 unit the issue that i had it empty for about three weeks something like that about roughly a year ago um and at during that time uh some people uh, decided to walk in through the back and uh, break in through the bathroom window and um, live and mess up my place. Um, and when we went there, the property manager and I with a new tenant to show him the unit, uh, we had quite a big surprise there. Not a very pleasant one. Uh, what they also did and that brings me to this issue here with the uh, Kleeplock roof is that they they have uh, because there was a sprinkler installed on the roof they didn't like that because they wanted to get in there at night and the sprinkler was on at night they didn't want to get wet so they threw uh, stones on the roof until they hit the sprinkler and broke broke it and um, there again my expense um, lucky we have cameras there now, so that won't happen again. Um, but with by doing that, they created actually for me even more costs because with those stones, they did not create like big cracks or anything, but because this aluminium is still the same aluminium that there is from the times when the building buildings were built so they created micro cracks in uh in the aluminium and it starts cracking and cracking and cracking so it's a lot of like hard to find cracks in the roof itself and it leads to all sorts of weird leaks now i uh, i had a roofing guy there uh uh, and I asked them for a quote of what it would cost to re to replace the roof. It was something around uh, five six thousand dollars, and um, because the angle of the roof has to be adjusted and so on so far. Um, so I chose a different way, which was painting the roof with uh, how is that stuff called, Graham? What is that? It's a kind of sealer. It's a, yeah, it's a kind of sealer. Uh, however, you basically have to, if that happens to you, and it will most likely happen to a lot of more units moving forward, um, including common property ones like D-Block, you have to pretty much paint the entire roof, which I didn't realize in the beginning. I thought I'd just paint this area where it's sort of the obvious cracks. But once it starts, it starts cracking in the entire area and then you have to paint the entire roof which is still cheaper than replacing the roof but it is quite some ongoing cost then it's really strange to find so i like to warn the owners here that if you have some odd leaks on the uh on the flat on your flat roof side 
uh, that could be an indicator for that. And then the, you basically are the only two options that we found is either replacing the entire roof, which is that's between five and six thousand dollars, or uh, paint it, which is cheaper, but you can't just go don't don't that don't don't fall for it. It's not like ah oh, yeah, we just paint this area where it's obviously a little bit problematic, where the stones made some minor dents, and you have to paint the entire thing. And it's not actual paint, it's a kind of sealer. Yeah, yeah, but I, I use the word paint for, you know, for layman's terms. <laughs> so just that just on a side note, but you haven't uh, marked anything particularly here. Uh, so I just highly encourage all the owners to, to read through this. Um, so this is then um, C block, so we can ignore that because it's pretty much the same for all the different blocks. So I just scroll down. Let's see. Oh, whoops, it's actually two sided. So let me just quickly go over here. So to make sure that we haven't forgotten anything, we have the roof bit, windows and joinery. Annual maintenance on hinges. That's the bit that we forgot. Sorry. Um, so the annual maintenance on hinges, uh, window catchers, you put in body corp question mark. So as we have established, this is not body corp responsibility to fix the windows. Correct. Yep. Um, there are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, we, a few. Um, get an expert in and have a chat with them and then you, if you have experienced problems with your windows um, it's also important to instruct your um, property manager or if you look at it yourself check that the hinges are working proper because this are old windows and if the hinges don't work proper that might mean that your window cracks at some stage and it uh, becomes a little bit more expensive. Uh, same, of course, is true for the common property. So this is, of course, something that uh, Graham and the common property manager looking after. And because it's also old, um, it can quite quickly cost a lot of money. So we have to be aware of that. Yes, yeah, some of the um, some of the joinery is not in good nick. Yeah, and that's just the beginning of all the little ticking time bombs that we are having here, little and gigantic ticking time bombs uh, that we're having uh, in the privately owned units as well as uh, on the common property. So it is really hard to, um, and it's something that we pointed out at the AGM as well, it's really hard to actually make a proper maintenance budget. Because as you can see with my example with my roof, um, if you have this kind of issue on the common property or anywhere else, you can, it can happen pretty quick or may not happen in the next 20, 30 years. Uh, you don't know. And if it happens, uh, you then have to find a okay, K. They, of course, the roofing guys always want to change the roof and say, "Here we go. Uh, here's your here's your big invoice." Um, they are with modern technology and all this advanced chemicals around these days. There are uh, quite often cheaper ways of fixing things uh, long term as well. So um, that's also something always that we always need to think of. To, this is not just a quick fix for a year and then whatever happens after. So this is this is a really big issue uh, budget wise. And we have plenty of those. As you know, the, the place was built in the 50s and changed to its current stage in the 80s. So this is 40 years ago, the change. Uh, and so everything is now starting to fall apart, for lack of a better word. So and some of this is, of course, in the past, windows have been jimmied open and all sorts of things. It's yeah, like that's that. another thing. We had all this for years. This place has been, um, has had not the most desirable clientele. It's changing a lot now. Um, 
but yeah so if there's pretty much no window that hasn't been broken into with you know broken open at some stage um so there are plenty of windows that at least need some kind of repairs in terms of fixing the hinges or fixing the the locks on it and making it better if you 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 as an owner you want to have a look at that we are pretty good as the body corp on the common property with those um we have fixed that because obviously uh, graham had had a look at it and said, oh, this is unacceptable but i could point out a couple of places where um one could easily open the windows with a butter knife and that's something that the owners need to look after and that the um, that property managers need to be made aware of in terms of hey you got to look at that don't ignore the maintenance manager don't ignore what the other owners tell you about this uh, go and you know either have a look yourself ideally or make really sure your property manager is doing a job there, this job there. Um, so yeah, good point. Thank you, Graham, for that. So if you scroll down, um, ongoing maintenance required on pathways and driveways. That's also something that we had in the AGM um, there again. Uh, pathways, driveways, if they are on um, common property however your parking spot is actually assigned to your unit as part of your title so if you have a tenant or if you're if you have a tenant with a oil leaking car or anything like that this uh, can lead to damage in the asphalt can damage the your parking lot that's up to you to fix and um, everything else is sort of a thing where you have to um, look into uh, where we have to look into finding finding ways of fixing it. But we're reasonably good. We're not just filling holes. We're trying to um, to fix it more permanent. Finding solutions there, um, which is a lot of research done voluntarily, uh, mainly by Graham, going around asking experts. Okay, what can we do? We, this is this option. This is that option. What can we do? Uh, how can we fix that permanently? Um, but they are parts of the uh, driveway, as I said, the um, park, car parks uh, that are individual owners' responsibility. So, uh, clotheslines has been have been fixed uh, mostly, except for D block. We need to uh, find some better ways to optimize things in D block. Uh, we also have to have a better look with the cameras on those uh, since there has been damage done. Um, but we are pretty much onto it now that we have cameras looking there. All this applies to all three blocks, A, B and C. Exactly. D block. So D block is completely uh, common property. Therefore, whatever happens there is, you know, either tenants' responsibility if it's some damage or things like that. Uh, otherwise, it is a body corp responsibility to look after D block. D block is also a bit special, in and including the interior. Yeah, yeah, of course, um, you know, ultimately uh, being not just the, have, having no owner as an individual here means that we have to work as a body corp to make sure that uh, the tenants are decent and we don't have uh, any trouble. Now, D-Block is also very special because it is still in the stage prior to the 80s, prior to the conversion to individual units. So those uh, units do not have bathrooms. It's a, a shared facilities block. 
the so-called boarding house under um, the uh, Tenancy Act, which means a couple of uh, different things in terms of legislation. Um, we have the bathroom in the middle of the block and uh, the kitchen right next to it in a different you know, room, obviously, which provides uh, showers, cooking facilities and washing. Um, so this is all body corp. Um, it's not much different to the um, to to the other blocks, except for that it doesn't have this um, doesn't have a pitch roof. Pitch roof, yes, and uh, therefore it's fairly simple. Um, so I can't see you haven't haven't put any kind of um special comments in here oh yes here it is so with d block you marked the paint the timber ceiling in the showers uh, kitchen bathroom um so the taps have been removed have been uh, replaced uh paint shower walls replace shower curtains and replace vinyl floor in kitchen now um <clears throat> We also changed some lights to LED because we had to because they were broken. Um, they also have been um, taken out. So that's a fairly common thing because of our um, close proximity to the um, mongrel mob. So the uh, gang um, headquarter um in some other issues in town um we had the we had quite often um theft of um light bulbs because those are used to smoke uh methamphetamines so um we had to replace the lights to something more suitable uh also longer lasting so that was uh, well worth it um we changed uh, the lights together with Alan and an electrician to motion sensor activated rather than um, rather than having them on and a light switch because um, especially external people who came in used the facilities uh, did not bother to turn any kind of switches on or off or anything like that um, so that has been resolved of course we have uh, cameras there and um, actually the D block kitchen is the place where we had the most vandalism done towards the cameras, which uh, I believe uh, says something. Um, so we don't know what the kitchen was used for before, um, but we have now two cameras because one wasn't enough in the kitchen. So uh, that quite a things down quite a bit. We have to see where we are going here in terms of um, maintenance slash uh, replacement of things. As far as I can see, we have two options. Um, and here again, I totally rely on you, Graham, to see how that goes. Um, the bathroom obviously doesn't have, we can't put cameras in the bathroom, so there is still ongoing issues. Um, we have one at the entrance, but it's not really proof or anything. Um, and they are in a rather problematic state. I wouldn't take a shower there um, without, you know, at least having shoes on. Um, so this uh, is in dire needs of an upgrade. Um, similar things go for the kitchen or the kitchen is not so bad as the bathroom um, so one has to think do we just maintain it and you know replace the bits or do we put something better in there and it's again something for our volunteer workers to figure out shop around get quotes potentially working on um, on those upgrades ourselves as owners uh, as what we do and 
as as volunteer workers, um, which is great, of course, that saves everybody money. Um, and whoever is willing to put the, the time and effort in um, to join us in this endeavor, uh, please do so. We plea pretty much every year for any kind of help we can get from the owners. And we are quite successful with that. Um, growing numbers of owners are actually willing to uh, volunteer and help out. But yeah, so there are basically two approaches here. We either spend the five grand on um, just sort of maintenance and it will be ongoing, or we find ways of building more permanent, more longer lasting ways. Easier uh, clean. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? An easier cleaning. Yes, and easier cleaning, of course. So uh, with all of that, um, that's another issue that we have and where we're going from here with this. Um, so far, we have just replaced things when they were really faulty or um, we had ongoing, ongoing issues with this. But uh, we have to get some options and uh, make a judgment call at some stage. Um, so we have, yeah, so we already put some numbers on here. So moving, moving on, um, of course, the uh, exterior has to be uh, maintained as well as the the interior to a certain degree. However, um, we're all pretty hands on. I, there are some very likable people in this block uh, who are very hands on and are willing to help us out volunteering as well to get those things fixed. That just requires somebody with the necessary people skills, which I hope we have found now as a property manager to to deal with those. Um, so this is something ongoing and if we scroll over there it's the next one i think yeah we have the issue with uh, with windows so very similar to to a b and c block and of course in this case it is uh, body corp responsibility to maintain this kind of things uh, another thing that we have done just talking about windows is we have closed the bathroom uh, the um Kitchen window, you have closed this permanently and installed a fan, um, which uh, you know, enabled us to um, stop people from getting in from the back window to the kitchen to use it, uh, which was mostly third parties. And of course, throwing out rubbish and things like that which also has been resolved by um, intense CCTV work. So moving on, the next part is E-Block, which is this. Now this building is currently um, rented out. I call it a, our prime property because it is quite a big uh, commercial building. Uh, with full, unlike everything else in the place, full wheelchair accessible. Uh, it is rented out currently to um, a Pofakaru, which is a um, social um, organization which is looking, which is using this building to look after. Um, physically and mentally uh, challenged people. Uh, they we're, we're working on a uh, proper leasing contract with them and um, we'll see what we will what we will come up with there. Um, but generally, um, at least from the non maintenance side, there are no problems. However, maintenance wise, uh, there are some challenges and this is why we have to work on a proper leasing contract with them um, to uh, make clear who is responsible for what. So you marked here uh, treat surface corrosion for the galvanized cut, uh, guttering. Mm -hmm. 
Um, wouldn't it be easier to just replace it with plastic? Or what do you think probably, about that? Probably would be the better way. It is uh, more expensive, though, than just paint. give it a paint. Uh, yes. Right. So we have to, as a committee, look into that. However, then again, we have to first figure out the um, conditions of the lease, the commercial lease, to see if that is still our responsibility to do or not. So this is in ongoing negotiations. Send and uh, repaint, obviously. Um, cladding, okay. So this is pretty much the same as uh, in all other blocks. There. Mm -hmm. uh, this was painted about eight years ago, the exterior of mm -hmm. the building. Mm -hmm. um, it is starting to get, uh, particularly the window frames and things like that, are starting to show wear and tear. So that is an up and coming painting job. If uh, we are still responsible for this, depending on uh, the leasing contract. Correct. Yeah. Um, same goes for you know, exterior. So then there is the issue with the rusted roof, which is a big one. So uh, it, this is on the annex of, of that building. It's actually yeah. separate. So but that is the, the red bit in the back here. I don't know if you can see this. And the photo, this over there. With the pitched roof. Mm. Yeah, oops, sorry. Um, and yeah, so you say this will need replacing, so we are not just getting away with painting this. So we have to find a way to either get it replay, get this responsibility on to. Um, the other side or we have to do this so this is currently all up for negotiations with them um annual maintenance injuries and so on yeah this is all things you know you see with a with a commercial lease uh there is a way more negotiations possible because uh it's not a a residential tenancy and therefore, all these things are up for negotiations. Who is responsible for what? Um, so I can't really talk about this. It's um, not with me anyway. So we will see how this goes. And so what else do we have here? So they have a fireplace and a chimney. And this is all basically, it can, if depending on how the contract goes, it can become quite expensive. Um, and if not, then we're lucky and uh, we found somebody who is willing to um, pay for the repairs and who is obviously committed to long term being a long term, uh, long term resident, I guess, in a sense, for this building. And uh, that would be great course it probably means that we have to ask for we cannot ask for a high lease on this um, but this is as I said our up for negotiation so we just uh, flick over that quickly F lock which is the last one on the list um, now this is a building that we're currently only using as a store room in a sense so um, the issue with this building, as far as I understand, is that it has a asbestos roof. And that because of this, uh, we cannot rent it out as a commercial lease or anything. We can just use it as storage space, um, more or less for ourselves. The risk here is that and I don't want to skip too far, but I just go down there, see if I can find it. If if there are severe cracks or anything, here we go. In the roof itself, if there's anything that 
every, any kind of bigger damage, uh, it would force us to instantly having to replace it, which is about fifty thousand dollars. So with this fifty thousand dollars, if this happens, and those things can happen, I mean, who would have thought that somebody throws stones on my uh, breaks into the back of my unit and throws stones on my roof to to hit a sprinkler who is totally somewhere else. And, um, you know, if those kind of silly things happen here, um, and even if we have footage, may, we may not get the people, and then where should some kids get $50,000 for? So if that happens, uh, and it may happen, may not happen, then at some stage uh, we basically have to emergency double our uh, maintenance fund, more than double. And uh, we have to find ways to address this. Maybe we want to become more proactive about this and say, okay, we we are saving up the money and uh, change the roof. However, at this point, it didn't come up like that because um, we had just too many other issues at the place in terms of it was not prior to the CCTV system and prior to the body corp having working on those things in an appropriate manner together with the local authorities, uh, anything that was done in terms of maintenance of the place uh, was damaged by, uh, you know, un uh, problematic tenants or their visitors. Um, but this is now different. We're now improving on this, or we're improving on those in the last two years. Working things out from there and uh, hopefully have uh, soon a place where we can actually think about uh, being proactive in our maintenance and fixing things like that. It is uh, quite a nice solid building that's, um, I can quote here the building surveyor as well. Um, very nice, uh, solid structure, uh, no cracks whatsoever. If we would be able to replace the roof for a decent price, we could do all sorts of amazing things with it, like having another commercial building to rent out uh, or even looking into, since it has water and wastewater access, uh, making it another kind of residential building, uh, either shared uh, like a shared um, um, shared shared facilities building, um, a like a boarding house kind of thing, or um, as I said, commercial building, and and one or the other way. At this point, however, as long as we have the Damocles sword, <laughs> the asbestos roof, uh, on our heads. Um, we have to be really, I, I can't stress that enough, that this is one of the big worries together with the cracking aluminium roofs um, that, and, and the iron roofs that, the, um, that can cost us instantly a lot of money and this is something that is, cannot be accounted for as easily in a main, normal maintenance plan. So you have my my total uh, sympathy there, empathy there for for this kind of challenge. Um, so what else needs to be done in an F block? I'd just like to add something there. Yep. The reason it is so expensive is because it's asbestos. So it has to be done by suitably qualified people, and the asbestos has to be dumped. It has to go somewhere like Hamilton. Um, yes, so it has to be a proper company, and they have to, uh, I spoke when I got the quote, uh, when you got the quote, I was there as well, um, they have to block off certain things, so when they take it off, that the fibers don't blow over to the Pofakaru School for Disabled, and things like this, this is a quite an advanced job that cannot be done by any volunteers or any of us in any way it has to be done professionally and yeah this is quite a worry okay um so if we 
move on. I just move on over there first. So we have those exterior bits. And then we have the um, paint exterior every 10 years. Um, so with that building, um, I believe that's, of course, you know, a thing that's up to the committee to decide. But I believe we should uh, give that a lower priority than, than other buildings and other things in terms of painting, since we can't really use this building for anything good at the moment, thanks to the asbestos roof. Um, we, I think we can neglect the painting of the exterior to a certain degree. Yep, agreed. Um, but that's up to the committee. So this is, of course, just a personal opinion. So if you say uh, two exterior doors need replacing. Yes. Which ones are those? If I scroll up, can we see it here on um, the picture? Uh, only, you can only see the one which is around the, the side here. This one? That one there. Ah, yes, that, okay, yep. That was uh, that broken into by certain Our wheelchair bits. friend, yep. <laughs> the same with the door around, there's a door around the back here. Which uh, we frequently. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That door has also been damaged and it is actually also rotting because it's just a, an age thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The other doors are okay. Very good. Oops. So we are here. So that's a, just a disclaimer. Okay, now we're coming to some separate little jobs that are not that is you know part partially that are added to this. Just things that will picked up by you or by me or by some, some other owner and put on here, put to our attention. So we have um, missing white bars in some on front of some units and we of course have to check if those if this is a body corp responsibility or owner's responsibility to fix this up. Um, and then we have also have oh, it's a bit hard to see on this, but this is um, since D block, which is uh, the shared facility block that we just discussed. Since uh, the tendons there, I mean, obviously uh, everywhere in the world, um, in in a reasonably good country, uh, the people get have more and more things and you know get a better and better lifestyle so uh now d block tendons ha are having cars and we do not have any proper designated parking for d block tendons so this is also something that we would like to do we'd like to assign some parking over here in an un more or less unused area so this is uh, some spray paint and things so that's something that we would like to do So we would also like to get some additional um, income by installing. You see, this is the main the, the main intersection from uh, the highway, the Tamarangi Drive, into town. And you can see over here, this is actually the village property, and the little red sign that I put up there we could install a advertisement sign there and rent that out. We will have a chat about that in the committee with our common property manager uh, who knows a bit more about the market in town and uh, if it's worth doing that and potentially uh, making some extra money because that's what we need um, to do all the to finance all the maintenance of the common property. Um, another thing that we are looking at is finding ways to um, get to fix up, sort out the letterboxes 
Um, at the moment, we have them sort of like birds on a on a line, sitting around on on some rotting away poles, and uh, the idea that came up was to put those in some kind of cut off the top bit put them all together in some kind of concrete um, brick block to uh, make this more less maintenance work so you see we want to avoid having to do weed eating around the areas underneath we want to have it look nice without having to constantly paint it and look into it so this is something that is uh, on the table for the committee to uh, find solutions and maybe we find somebody who is willing to volunteer to build this up and this is pretty much the case for all the blocks so that is with the uh, committee but of course um, Graham has the um, you know is looking and ensuring the quality of this work we have another little issue which is it's also a bit hard to see here maybe i can scroll in so this is a um a bird's eye view of the village we have the we have d block over here this is all d block this is a uh, part of c block and um this is the uh this is f block with the asbestos roof and then we have here this school for disabled. And here you can also see the uh, red part is the iron roof, the rusty iron roof. Um, but what you can see in this one here is that back in the days when they put up the fence, they put up the fence in the wrong position. So our property line is actually going along here. So what needs to be done is we need to change the gate there we don't have to change the fence. Uh, we will just plant flax there to work it out from there, uh, which is much cheaper and easier. Uh, but we need to change the fence, uh, the, the gate that allows the access to the back of the property. Uh, we need to change that. And that's a bit of a bigger job. Mm, it's a bit hard to see here too but basically we have to cut down the trees and bushes and move the gate from here to over there i hope you can see that in order to comply with the floor plan and that is roughly if i see that right here's roughly 500 dollars to do so um but it is, of course, important to do so because if we don't do it now, um, of course, the bushes and things will grow bigger and then it will be more expensive for every year that we wait on this. It also means on the, on the plus side that we don't have to do so much lawn mowing anymore. All this side here, we don't have to mow the lawn anymore. So this is good. Try to see the positive on this. Then I gotta zoom out again. Yes, so we have discussed all of this. That so that's that's pretty much it. Would you like to add something more? No, I don't think there's a lot more to add. Um, um, small jobs like that is, is uh, things that I can do. Um, <clears throat> And um, the bigger worry is some of the bigger jobs. Yes, Which and unfortunately, yeah. So unfortunately, there um, we many of those jobs are something that we may have to do. We may don't. We may not have to do it. Um, it's really hard to tell and foresee with things. Um, other jobs we have to do. Or we have to get contractors in, but we had some bad experiences with contractors as well in the past and. <clears throat> then you run around trying to figure out how this works, so uh, how to get them back and finish the job. 
Uh, of course, there again, um, the CCTV team and the CCTV is very helpful to check on contractors if they're actually doing the job. I guess it all boils down to um, if, you know, with all the bad reputation, at least you know, my opinion on this, with all the bad reputation of the village, um, it seems to be widely okay to, you know, do things like dump rubbish there because the bad place, so who cares, um, to uh, go there and, you know, stir up trouble or trying to steal from people because they are all just crooks. They, you know, this is the, the my common mindset in town, me living there, um, my partner living at the village, uh, people don't believe it, you know, people don't believe that we live there and I can even see that once I tell them, I suddenly have a much worse standing, like if I would have said I live in Onslow Street or something like that. Um, so it's it's a general thing and the same goes for contractors as well. Uh, in addition to that, we have been blacklisted uh, by uh, some uh, companies in town. Uh, I have managed to, uh, you know, by showing them CCTV footage and so on, that we have improved and that there are uh, workers will no longer be harassed. A um, good example would would be uh, leather plumbing. Uh, they have refused us service for quite a while until I had a good chat with the manager and showed them the CCTV system uh, because uh, there was a lot of harassment towards their um, staff members. So this is another challenge, uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of work that needs to be done talking to people. Uh, again, this is why it is so important. We any hand, any help we can get. Uh, you know, we have you don't have to live here. Uh, we have Robert, uh, who lives uh, in Santiago de Chile, and we have uh, Choman, who lives in uh, Florida. So both people very active. Uh, Robert used to be in the committee and is still active and so so is Chaman. They are active. They're living overseas and they're active. So uh, we have a lot of work that can be done by people um, that do not have to be local, that do not have to, to be here. So here again, and even better if you're here, if you, you know, you want to get the body coffees down, awesome. Grab a paint bucket, you know. That's 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 what I do. That's what Graham does. Uh, that's that's what other body court members do. Other um, members of the committee, um, other owners, uh, even and, and including tenants. So it's it's really a thing that with the amount of work we could easily charge, we could easily double the body court fee in order to be able to pay for this all. Uh, but I rather have us working together as a team to work this out. So that's that's my take on this. Um, thank you very much, Graham. Uh, if you don't have anything more to add to this, uh, uh, any kind of... All I could add is that yep. this, the, the camera setup has helped tremendously. Uh, yes, it, uh, it has paid off multiple times already. Yes. And any kind of questions, uh, please contact our body court management company <clears throat> and no owners or um, body court members, chairman um, or uh, committee members directly. It all has to go the proper way, which is otherwise it might get messy. Um, we are all just a bunch of volunteers. so. Please, if you have questions, go the proper way, go over Crocus, go over our management company, contact contact us over that, and then things can be sorted out. Um, if you want to help, awesome. Come do it, help us with this. We can make this place, we can change this place. We can make this place amazing. Prime property. But for that, we have to work together. All right. Thank you very much, Graham.
Thank you, Chris. And thank you for watching.